Now let's talk about how to practice this shot because just like any, anything else in tennis or any other discipline uh, for that matter, it's all about learning what steps you need to take to do it X, Y, or Z effectively and then repeating it enough times that it becomes second nature and really becomes a habit. And dealing with a short ball effectively is no different. You need to work out the identification. You need to work out the positioning. You need to work out the different swing uh, pads to be able to hit flat or add a little bit of topspin, a little bit of curve. You need to work out all those different things, the, the footwork. So if you don't put in the repetitions necessary, you'll never really be comfortable enough with this shot that you can make your opponents really pay for it over and over again. So let's talk about how to practice. And it starts off with good target placements. Don't be a sucker and if you're a singles player and aim for here when you get that short ball, okay? It's very important that when you practice, you practice smart targets. And in my opinion, that means about four or five feet from the sideline and about six or seven feet from the baseline. You must give yourself margin for error. No matter how much of a sitter it is, no matter how easy of a shot you think it is, you must give yourself margin for error. And a lot of times where um, this opportunity that we have really kind of bites, come, comes back and bites us is when we've picked too aggressive of a target and we end up making a lot of unforced errors, which we don't need to make. It's too bad because we have that chance, we have that opportunity, and rather than capitalize on it, we just hand the point over to our opponents. And I, I just want to be very clear that targets are important and being purposeful about where you place your targets are important. If you're a doubles player, then same thing. Give yourself about four feet of space from the sideline, about six feet of, of space from the, uh, from the baseline. Put one of those targets on each side of the court and here's how I recommend you practice. First of all, begin by hitting 10 forehands cross courts and 10 forehands down the line total that are within a couple feet of this target area. So um, put the target back here for a uh, singles player. So you know, if you, if you hit a, a shot that lands here, great, good shot. Here, great, good shot. Anything within you know, a four or five foot circle of this specific target is a success. Make 10 of them cross courts, then make 10 of them down the line, total, cumul cumulative. Then hit backhands, hit 10 cross courts, hit 10 down the line, total. So now you've made 20 forehands, you've made 20 backhands, receiving a short feed. And this could be with a ball machine, this could be with a friend uh, feeding to you, or it could be you with a basket of balls tossing up into the air, positioning yourself, and just hitting from a stationary shot. What does everybody say when they complain about this shot? Oh, the, the, uh, my opponent had no pace to their shot. I had to generate all the pace myself, right? Everybody seems to complain about that. Well, give yourself literally a shot that has no pace and learn how to generate all of it yourself. Just toss up, hit at shoulder height, and practice confidently hitting the right shape and hitting accurately. So again, cumul cumulative, 10 cross court down the line, then go back again to the forehand, uh, I'm sorry, cumulative, both uh, forehand and backhand, 10 each direction, then make five in a row to each target. So forehands, cross courts. Keep aiming cross court until you hit five in a row with a confident swing that land within four or five feet of this target area. Then go down the line, forehands, five in a row. Then go to the backhand side, cross court, five in a row. And down the line, five in a row. So now you've completed four sets of five in a row, challenging your consistency to be able to execute over and over and over again, again, with a confident swing. Uh, it's human nature, after making the 10 total and then switching the five in a row, for the racket head speed to drop. Because now all of a sudden like we have a goal and, and we don't want to blow it and go back to zero. Don't do that. Do yourself a favor. Continue to accelerate confidently and really drill your consistency with a shot that you would actually use. Um, lastly, I'll just give you a suggestion for one of my favorite uh, competitive games that you can uh, use with a, a partner to, to work on that short ball. Uh, simply start off in the middle of the baseline. So this uh, is going to train your singles uh, specifically. 
and one person is going to feed a ball that lands inside the service line. The feed must land inside of either service box, inside the service line. The person receiving the feed is going to move forwards, practice hitting that short ball, and then play out the points. You're going to rotate who feeds. You, you, you can do it any way you want. A lot of times uh, we would play up to 11 and we would switch the feed every four points. So I would you know, feed uh, short ball, we'd play it out, short ball, we'd play it out four times. Then my opponent would feed for four points, a short ball, and I would move in and attack. So it, just so it's even back and forth. That way you practice responding to that short ball and actually playing out the point and setting it up and um, having to execute when there's a little bit of pressure on. Um, do that with a partner. It's an excellent uh, competitive drill that you could do after practicing um, in a non-competitive environment, just, just doing the, uh, the target practice. So there's a bunch of ideas for you how you can work on this shot, put in the time, and you will be rewarded.